Continuing with geometric transformations, we spoke of translations, which would really be a shift of a point left, right, up, or down. And of course, we can uh, have that transformation applied to an entire figure. Today, we're moving on to rotations, and uh, we're going to talk about that quite a bit more. Uh, obviously, if we have a point x comma y if we were about to rotate that point about the origin and if we were to rotate that theta degrees we would arrive at a new coordinate x prime y prime again this is called our pre-image for x comma y where we would begin uh, x prime y prime would be referred to as the image uh, what you're generally going to be working with is rotations that are counterclockwise, just as we would study in trigonometry. Uh, so here is really what we have done. We've derived a system uh, of, of equations right here, and we've written them in matrix form. And uh, this is a very wonderful way to uh, be able to find an image given a pre-image rotating, rotating it theta degrees about the origin. Uh, just how that all applies, uh, I'm not going to take time to prove that. It is in our little packet. But uh, notice in this matrix, uh, the transformation matrix A, we have cosine of theta, opposite sine of theta in the first row, down below sine of theta, cosine of theta in the bottom row, multiplying to our uh, pre-image coordinates of x comma y in a 2 by 1 matrix. Here we have a 2 by 2 matrix multiplying by a 2 by 1. Of course we will have an answer multiplying to the outer dimensions of 2 by 1. There is our image. So uh, several uh, special rotations that we can speak of. What if theta is 0 degrees? Now immediately, I think we can notice, well, wait a minute, my goodness, if we're at zero degrees, uh, that's not going to change our uh, point at all. We're not going to have any movement via rotation. Uh, you're going to see very quickly, if we were to substitute this in, cosine of zero is one. Uh, sine of zero is zero whether you put an opposite in front of it or not. Notice uh, this matrix is really the identity matrix, and uh, anytime you multiply an identity matrix to x comma y, you get the exact same uh, matrix. So this is why when we multiply here, we will arrive at x prime y prime is equal to simply x y. Now remember, we could also multiply by hand first row, first column, multiply a 1 times x, 0 to y, that's your first row. Uh, down below in the multiplication, sine of 0 times cosine, I'm sorry, sine of 0, which is 0, times x, cosine of 0 is 1. Uh, multiply 0 to x, 1 to y, add them together. So no change, nothing is going to happen. Uh, by way of comparison, though, if we were to multiply by 90 degrees, well, all of a sudden, here that's quite a bit different isn't it uh, you can see here's x prime y prime uh, this is uh, the cosine of 90 degrees opposite sine of 90 degrees here's sine of 90 degrees cosine of 90 degrees cosine of 90 is 0 uh, sine of 90 is 1 this would become negative 1 down here's a 1 over here's a 0 just want to review real quickly how we could even multiply with our graphing calculator, in fact, with this TI-89. Uh, notice that this first matrix is 0, negative 1, 1, comma, 0. So uh, we would use brackets, and we'd have to type in our first row, which is 0, comma, negative 1. Put in your semicolon when you're done with a row, that's second 9. Then type in your second row, 1, comma, 0. Uh, close your brackets. 
and now let's multiply that to the matrix x comma y. I wanted to point out that you could have an x, you can see the x buttons two above, one to the left of the seven. Uh, that's the end of your row, so hit a semicolon. And then we'd hit our y, close our brackets right here. Oops, that didn't take, but let's try that again. Second, divide. Ah, it's not cooperating today. Let's try it one more time. There we go. Hit enter. What are we seeing? Opposite y, x. Of course we could do this by hand also. There's uh, no big deal uh, working that out, multiplying by hand. Honestly, I think it's even more uh, quick to do that. But what are we seeing? We're seeing uh, this is the matrix form. They're pointing this out right here. Well, what if we did the cosine of 180 degrees? Well, evidently we'd get this. Uh, the transformation matrix is cosine of 180, opposite sine of 180. Uh, down here we have sine of 180, cosine of 180. And we're going to multiply that to x, y. So you can see what's going to happen. We're going to have cosine of 180 is actually negative 1. Uh, sine of 180 is 0. Put a negative in front of it. You still get that. Cosine of uh, 180 is negative 1. So let's even multiply here real quickly by hand. Uh, first row by first column. Negative 1 times x, 0 times y. You would get a negative x as you multiply that out. 0, it go with our second row. 0 is matched up with x. 0 times x cancels out. Negative 1 times y is negative y. You can see this is where the author is getting this answer. That's the multiplication we would arrive at. Uh, very similarly for 270 degrees, I'm not going to work that out in all of its detail, but of course we get uh, x prime is equal to y, y prime is equal to negative x. Um, Let's real quickly move on and take a look at what was happening. Write the equations of rotations about the origin in matrix form. Well, you know what? We just did that uh, pretty much for the uh, 180 degrees. Uh, that would be just as we saw uh, over here. We had negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1 x, y, and here's x prime, y prime. So we're doing so much of that. You can see still up above with the 90 degrees, uh, we had uh, x prime, y prime. And they're asking for this in matrix form. Look, the cosine of 90, you can see up at the very top of the screen, it would say uh, 0, actually. Shame on me. There's your 0 and sine. Of 90 is 1, so that's negative 1. Sine of 90 is 1, and cosine of 90 is 0. So uh, that's, of course, what's happening uh, right here. You could say, what about the 270? You know, just so that we're referring to that as well. Cosine of 270, well, uh, we had x prime, y prime. Uh, well, what is the cosine of 270? Well, it's 0. Uh, then we'd need the opposite sine of 270. Well, the sine of 270 is negative 1. Take the opposite of it, you get a 1. In this bottom left entry, it's always the sine of the angle. Sine of 270 is negative 1. Uh, so uh, let's move that over just a smidge. That's the transformation matrix that we would have, writing this in matrix form. Of course, as we said earlier, might as well do the 0 degrees. Once again, writing it as a matrix, we said that you know there's no change. That's the identity matrix looking just like so. And there we have it. All right, well, write the equation of transformations if you're going about 45 degrees. Well, my goodness, we could do that super fast, I hope. Uh, very, very similar uh, work. So let's uh, go ahead and do a little bit of work off to the side. For 45 degrees, we know that we're going to have the cosine of 45 
opposite sine of 45, sine of 45 down below. There's another cosine of 45. And uh, then we're multiplying by x, y. Well, all of these uh, sines and cosines are going to be root 2 over 2. Uh, remember, root 2 over 2, written even more simply, is 1 over root 2. Uh, so you can certainly do that. You don't have to rationalize. Uh, as you go to higher mathematics, you'll see that becomes less and less common. Uh, so here we have a matrix form uh, right here, writing the equations of transformation for a rotation. Now, very, very, very quickly, we could also quickly arrive at uh, the multiplication, just a system of equations. X prime, uh, this top entry, how would we get our top entry? Top row uh, multiplied 1 over root 2 times X minus 1 over root 2 times y. Uh, y prime, of course, we'd take our row by column. 1 over root 2 would get multiplied to x. And then we'd say plus 1 over root 2 times y. Uh, why is this so important? Well, we could immediately jump into number 3. We could say, well, you know, either multiplying this out uh, in matrix form right here, and we could even use our TI-89 to multiply that out like I showed earlier. But my goodness, sometimes it's you know, even just as quick. You could say, well, what about 1 comma 1? Well, that's your x comma y. We just saw that x prime is 1 over root 2x minus 1 over root 2y. Well, my goodness, if x and y are both 1, you're going to get x prime to be 0. Let's say, well, what about y prime? Well, that's 1 over root 2x plus 1 over root 2y. Hey, you plug in 1s, you get 1 over root 2 plus 1 over root 2. And uh, we know that whenever you're adding two of the same thing, you'll get two of them. So you could certainly just say that's, you know, 2 times 1 over root 2, or you could just say 2 over root 2, just like that. And uh, if we rationalize this, it would even get a little bit simpler. If you multiplied that, you can see we have 2 root 2 all over 2. Hey, that's just root 2 itself. So what is the image? Where would we end up? Well, our image would end up at x prime, y prime, just like so. Well. Uh, that's a good start. The packet also has a few other problems. Maybe we could super quickly just talk about maybe another couple. We're going to have to continue on with another video. Number four, I hope it's you know just uh, intuitive to you that as you would rotate a circle about the origin, circles are symmetric uh, rotationally. So find the equation of a new circle well my goodness it's going to be equivalent obviously points would be uh, rotated and points would change however uh, the end result would still be the same circle you get a congruent circle uh, you know take a look at number five this is going to get a little bit more interesting and we're going to have to maybe just begin to set this up we're gonna to have to continue on with another video for number five way more interesting question they're saying uh, there's been a rotation through 180 degrees where did the point negative 2 comma 6 come from negative 2 comma 6 would be the ending point the image and maybe just to, to help you out real quickly we'll have to uh, pick this up again uh, but we know that we'd have cosine of 180, opposite sine of 180, sine of 180. And we know the sine of 180 is 0. Cosine of 180 is negative 1. So uh, we're going to have to pick this up. But we will know that this is negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1. 
We're going to try to find out where a certain point came from.